say all the right things when I'm hurting. You always pick me up when I am down. It's like you have a spark that leaves me burning. Yeah, you just have your ways to get me high. You make all my dreams come true. It feels right. Hey guys, good morning, it's Mike Chen. Today I am in the heart of Flushing and it's breakfast time and I hadn't eaten in the last 10 hours so I, I need something to, to go in right here. And traditional Chinese breakfast is my favorite thing in the world. So I'm gonna show you guys where to get some amazing, amazing breakfast and brunch items. And today we're going pretty deep. So some of the places I'm gonna show you might seem a little intimidating when you first walk in, but that's why you got me. Let's go. Location number one, Tenme Inc. This unassuming storefront hides some of the best Chinese breakfast items in Flushing. And there is always a long line. Well, maybe not now, because it's towards brunch time. And this place has tons of baked goods, buns, but there's only really a couple things people get here. First thing you see when you walk in here is, of course, like the seats are taken. This is communal seating, all right? When you see an open seat, just take a seat. The ladies there, they probably don't speak a lot of English. I'll tell you exactly what to order. I got three, four things here. Two of the things I always get when I'm here. The first one is this, and this looks pretty slimy and gooey, and it is. It's one of the most popular breakfast street foods in China. It's called a tofu nao. Literal translation is tofu brains. So yeah, I, I love this because I'm like a soybean zombie. It's a soy sauce based soup with some starch. There's some eggs in here, some wood ears, some little mushrooms, sometimes a little bit of crunchy preserved vegetables. You can eat it like this. You can dunk stuff into it. I would say this is the number one comfort breakfast food in China. Second item I got, this is called a jian bing guozi. This is the most popular street food item in all of China. And it's basically a crepe made with uh, mun bean flour mixed with regular flour so it has more of a snappy texture to it an egg is cooked directly into the crepe so you got that part of your breakfast and a crunchy dough is put on the inside and inside the crepe you're gonna find tian mian jiang or sweet bean paste and that's all it is it's, it's like a it's like a starch on starch crepe so everything I got everything here five dollars not kidding this could feed potentially two people. Also, I got a tea egg, something that I really like to have in the morning. This is much better than any scramble egg you'll have. Absolutely flavorful with Chinese spices, soy sauce soaked into it. And I just wanted to try this. I haven't had it here in, in the US yet. This is a dough made with yellow rice flour. And you see there's soybean powder on the outside. And this is a very traditional ancient Beijing street food. It's called donkey rolling around because when donkeys used to, used to roll around in Beijing, because Beijing has a lot of yellow earth, yellow dust, it will look like this. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. They did add a hot oil in here for me. Tofu is so soft. The soup flavor profile is it, it, so deep. You can taste the soy sauce, peppers, just an earthy, robust flavor. Even though it's kind of gooey, it's not like slimy. It's not like you're eating a ghost or anything. And it's actually really good for you. You know, it's tofu and every ingredient in here is very healthy. What I like to do is take my craving. Well, first you gotta take a bite. The only criticism I have is the crunchy thing that's supposed to be on the inside is not as crunchy anymore. Otherwise, it's dull. It's very snappy, so it's not like gooey like you're biting into a burrito, which essentially this is basically a Chinese burrito. You can taste a little bit of the bean, you can definitely taste the egg. And it's so good because it's savory, it's subtly sweet from the bean paste, and just so much different textures in here. And I love that fragrant fermented bean flavor. I do. It's not for everybody, but I absolutely love it. Here's the best part. This is why I always get these two together. You make like an NBA All-Star game and take this for a donk. That just made this entire crepe so much better because inside the dough is soaking up the soup, the crepe is grabbing onto it as well. Yeah, this is the perfect bite right here. Remember to suck a little bit when you're biting down to it. Because that soup is gonna try to escape because there's so much of it, you cannot let it happen. That is the ultimate traditional Chinese breakfast bite. Also, what you can do, what I like to do, break open the tea egg. You can either put it into your tofu soup if you want, 
I like to stick the egg inside my crepe. I know this is getting messier and messier, but trust me, it, it, it's fine. Take a bite of this with the tea egg in there. That is just transformative. If you never had a tea egg before, guys, you are missing out on one of the wonders of the food world. It's so creamy and fragrant. If you like tea and you like eggs, and most of us do, go get yourself a tea egg. I have a recipe for you guys too. If you wanna try, I'll link it down below. But tea egg is, is one of those things where wherever you add it, it becomes a life of the party. And right now, the party is right here. Last thing, the donkey rolling around. It's like a mochi roll with the red beans inside. <laughs> God, it's so good. After you finish your breakfast, make sure to get one of these. Sweet red beans is like the essence of many food items. And this thing, so chewy and subtly sweet. Trust me, you, you need this in your life. Especially if you love mochi, gotta have this. Breakfast is not over. We're going on to breakfast number two, and you don't want to miss this one. Breakfast number two, and I say this with absolutely no exaggeration, one of the best steam noodles you will ever have. A Joe Steam Rice Roll. Here they do everything fresh. So they take the rice, they soak it, they wash it, and then they grind it into the paste that makes these noodles. And usually in China, this is all done manually, but the machine will grind the rice and it will make it into this, this rice paste you see here. Best steamed rice noodle you'll find in New York City, hands down. Usually this is a dish you'll find in a lot of dim sum places, but here, well, one of his three locations, this is where you're gonna find the best rendition of this dish. And I've had this dish all around the world. This is still my favorite. And let me show you why. First of all, you see that one sheet he's cooking? That is basically one serving of noodles. And besides costing like $6 for all this, which is a full breakfast meal, look how thin and translucent these noodles are. Freshly steamed ground beef in the middle, scallions, sprouts, cilantro. Usually this noodle, the outside is not so thin, but this one, since they roll it so many times, they can make it incredibly light. Look, the egg is cooked right into the noodle itself. I mean, if I was these noodles' parents, I wouldn't let it go outside with something so see-through. And the sauce that's on here is cooked soy sauce, so you're not gonna get something that's completely overwhelming the flavor. One of the best noodles you'll ever have in New York City. Everything about it is oozing with flavor and love. The noodles are some of the most tender, softest steamed noodles. Like I said, most places you find these steamed noodles, they're not this thin, they're not this tender. But the inside, you got that great flavor of the egg. The meat is perfectly cooked. The crunch of the scallions, the cilantro, the aromatic sesame seeds. And then you gotta add some hot oil. Don't add too much so you're not completely overwhelming some of the flavor but I love a little hot oil with my noodles, and this is no exception. It's like Beethoven reincarnated, and he's now conducting a yummy symphony in my mouth. It's that transcending. If you love noodles, and you're in New York, there's no reason why you shouldn't be having one of these things. It is almost too good, five, six dollars. Would you rather have this or a Big Mac? Your choice, up to you. Balls in your court. Great thing is, after you finish eating this, you're fulfilled, but not overly stuffed. That only means breakfast number three. Breakfast number three takes us to familiar stumping grounds right across the street, New World Mall. This place makes the best Chinese burgers in New York City.
And to eat the Chinese burger, you gotta have the perfect complement. The liang pi from stall number 28. And what I love about this Chinese burger place, look how flaky and crispy the bun is. So what a really good burger bun looks like for Chinese people is the outside has to look like the color of a tiger, the spots of a tiger, which this definitely exhibits. And inside, just juicy bits of pork. It's so crispy on the outside and flaky and soft in the middle. This is like my dad. Hard on the outside, but really inside, big softy. Most exciting part. Mm. Best pork burger in New York City. I tried them all, 100% the best. And a big part of that is how thin, crunchy, flaky the bun is. And you can see how thin and airy the outside bun is. There's so much of the tender meat inside and just falling out already. I mean, this bun is so light, they can't even handle all the meat that's on the inside. And this is their liang pi. They have a different version of liang pi, which is different colors. It's made with all vegetables. This is sweet potato, this is spinach, and then we have carrots. And these are, of course, cold wheat noodles. Little bits of gluten, some of my favorite. Great to soak up that sauce. And of course, this is something you have to have when eating your pork burger. Mm. Their noodles are so smooth. You can taste a bit of the veggie, original veggies that's in here. I gotta add some black vinegar. That's what I love with these noodles. This is some of the softest liang pi I've had, and that's because what they do with their liang pi is the more traditional way, where they wash the dough. What that means is that you basically wash a chunk of dough until it becomes really, really smooth. And the water around it just becomes saturated with the dough itself, and it becomes really thick, and then you steam that, and that's how these noodles are made. And you can definitely tell that when you take a bite. And the best thing, take your pork bun, and go right into it. Go right into that sauce in the lamb pea and just dunk it in. Dunk it in, dunk it in. There you go. Mm, really the only way to eat this. Because the pork bun is so fatty and savory. It's really good to have something a little more acidic, a little vinegary, a little spicy to kind of balance this thing out. He's like a good man, he's a good woman. You need that kind of balance in food as well. And these two things, the lamb pea and the pork burger, Match made in heaven. That was a great three breakfasts. Uh, there's only one place I need to go, and it's a really special place because it's the first store of this place that's opening up in the US, and I'm the first one to be able to taste it. Let's go. This place, Tiger Sugar, probably one of the most popular bubble tea places in the world, and this is the first location in North America, so I'm gonna try it out. I had this in Singapore once, pretty good, so I'm expecting good things. It actually feels really cool because it's warm on the bottom, cold on the top, and you mix it really, really well. Get all the sugar, milk, bubbles, ice, everything dancing together. See that? There you go. Now I started to drink. What's unique about this milk tea drink is uh, obviously it's milk and what's called black sugar. And black sugar is something that comes from uh, sugar cane. So this is not a bad type of sugar. And they call it like tiger sugar because it kind of looks like a tiger, the, the, the little patterns. Mm. Got a nice roasted sugar flavor. The bubbles are very chewy, very in Taiwanese, they call it Q. I like the letter Q, that means it's really chewy and bouncy. This is really delicious. No wonder this is one of the most popular, popular milk tea drinks in all of Asia. And this of course rounds up an amazing food day. Guys, I'm gonna leave all the places I went to in the description box. Also, I'm gonna put the Chinese words for the dishes I ordered in the first place. So if you ever go there, just show them the Chinese characters and don't know what you want. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.